Okay, opening the meeting, uh, January 10th. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and uh, prior to that, silent meditation or prayer. Okay, Mr. Pizer, do we have any changes to the agenda this evening? Yes, we do, uh, Mr. Knowles. Item number six on the agenda, which is preliminary land development for Johnson Development. Uh, the administration received correspondence from council representing the applicant, um, uh, advising that uh, there are certain aspects of the project that they'd like to finalize before bringing it in front of council. So they've asked for a continuance from this evening and to have the uh, hearing scheduled on council's next available meeting. Okay, and that should be the uh, 24th. Do we have a motion to uh, move Johnson Development Associates to the 24th? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Johnson's has moved to 24. Uh, That's the only change in the uh, agenda of which I'm aware, Mr. Knowles. Okay. And just so people out there know that uh, our new councilwoman, uh, Michelle Benitez, and our councilman, uh, Ed Kisselback, are both not feeling well this evening. Uh, so it, it, as a precaution, they decided not to attend the meeting. Okay. So. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, since I, I think with um, the one the project we just continued, um, we were going to postpone this to give the uh, new council people an opportunity to see the project and what it is. Is the 24th reasonable? Can we get that done? Have a two two and one, or do we have to take this to um, the Mr. next meeting? Mr. McGinnis is here, so. Okay, now next is public comment on agenda items, uh, and you can address each agenda item as it comes up, so seeing no one come forward, we'll move to uh, number three. Number three is approval of council minutes. Now, uh, since uh, Ms. Champion was not on council uh, November 8th and December 6th, uh, Mr. Paizo, this is okay to move this to the 24th when we have a quorum to... Uh, yes. Uh, to approve the minutes. Uh, Debbie, just uh, carry the... Approval of the minutes over to the agenda for the 24th, please. Okay, do we need a motion to do that? We just do no, it. No, that's, that's fine. Okay, so we're moving the uh, uh, minutes to the 8th and the 6th. And then again, if anybody has any, uh, either Mr. Polari or myself or even the other council people want to address any of the minutes with uh, Debbie prior to our meeting, they certainly could do that and we'll approve them on the 24th. Okay, number four on the agenda is consideration of preliminary land development for Adam Karachi, I guess, Raising Cane's Restaurant, 3601 Horizon Boulevard. Good evening, Mike McGinnis from Begley Carlin here on behalf of the applicant Raising Canes. Uh, the subject property is located at 3617 Horizon Boulevard. Uh, this is the site of the Bertucci's in the Horizon Complex. Uh, just very briefly at the outset, I did want to clarify one item. When this was originally submitted, it was uh, marked as preliminary. We then revised that and submitted a preliminary and final application with the requisite escrows. So just to be clear, uh, we are requesting preliminary final approval in tandem tonight. We appeared at the zoning hearing board in October and received a, a couple of dimensional variances. 
and then we did appear at the Planning Commission and we're fortunate enough to receive recommended approval also in October. What I would like to do, uh, I'm going to give a very brief summary and then Mr. Karachi is with us. He flew in. I think it would be useful to hear a bit about who Raising Canes is, even though this is a uh, QSR operation, Raising Canes is a little bit different, I think, than what the township is used to, and I think it would be worthwhile to hear from Adam. Uh, the property itself is zoned planned commercial district, and what we're proposing is to demolish the Bertucci's and in its place to construct a new 3,590 square foot facility that is going to have uh, outdoor seating, indoor seating, and then a dual drive through lane. Unlike some other uh, restaurants that offer what I will consider to be similar food, Raising Cane's, as Adam will get into, offers one product. They make chicken tenders. So uh, when a customer arrives at Raising Cane's, there's a pretty good projection of what you're going to order. And <laughs> what, what that does is it has a traffic benefit. So I know some other restaurants have questions about queuing and stacking with these concepts. Raising Cane's, because they can predict what you're going to order, is constantly making uh, that one particular product. And that has the effect of quickly processing new customers through the line, which is of course also helped by the dual drive-through lane concept. Raising Cane's, even though they don't have a large local footprint, is a national brand. They have over 500 locations throughout the country. Uh, this is part of, I know what Raising Cane's is excited to be a push into uh, our region. We recently were approved uh, in Falls Township, and this would be the second location in Bucks County. So uh, I know this isn't a, we're not, we're not gonna see 10, 15 Raising Cane show up in the county, but we're excited to hopefully bring this also to Ben Salem in the very near future. We have uh, the Civil Engineers Review Letter, which just has a couple of uh, basically two and a half waivers. There's a partial waiver and two other waiver requests, which we'll get into. Uh, but I would like to have Adam briefly address his company, why he's excited about coming here. We can do a very brief walkthrough of the plan and happy to go over the review letter. So thank yep. you for your consideration yep. tonight. Thank you. What's that? I should have worn my Alabama tie tonight, Mr. Uh, Mayor. <laughs> he's from the South. He knows Alabama and Georgia. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I appreciate your time this evening. As Mike said, I'm Adam Karachi. I'm with Raising Canes. I'm the senior property development manager for the East Coast. Um, we are expanding into your region, and um, we're very excited about that. And I wanted to be here this evening to impress upon you how important this is to us. And um, we really hope to be a part of your community, uh, giving you basically the most active community involvement that you've probably ever seen from a quick serve restaurant. So a little bit about us. We started in 1996 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, we started just outside the gates of LSU and we were uh, basically founded by one guy who saved up and used his life savings to start the restaurant. Um, started as a business plan in one of his uh, college classes, and they told him it would never work. Well, 26 years later, here we are. Um, but basically, we have one item, as Mike said, and that's chicken fingers. And we also serve it with french fries, Texas toast, and coleslaw. We have Coke products, tea, lemonade, but that's it. So there's nothing else on the menu, and because we do the one thing, we do it well. And that's what differentiates us from some of the other chicken competitors that are out there. Um, so we're, we're really excited to be here. I know everyone's like, oh, it's another chicken place, but it's, it really does stand out compared to what you guys are probably used to. We are uh, big into, as I said, community involvement. There are six p uh, pillars that we are involved in, but by far the biggest is giving back to your local schools and being involved with entrepreneurship with small businesses. So I know that sounds funny, but we started as a small business, so we want to give back in that area. We also, our name Raising Cane comes from the founder's dog. He actually named the company after his dog, Cane, hence Raising Canes. And um, as a result, like animals are very important to our company, and we'll give back to the local animal shelters uh, in your community. So. When I say give back, it's not like you submit a grant or anything like that. It's, we actually employ a person whose full-time job 
is to go around to the different businesses in your community and help them with whatever they need, whether that's catering an event or sponsoring the little league team. They'll, they're the person. It's not like you're dealing with the manager of the restaurant who's very busy and can't, you know, doesn't have time. This person's dedicated sole time job is to work with people in your community and um, make an impact. So I just wanted to let you know who, who we are as a company and that we're different than, you know, the other QSRs that have probably come into your community. And if you guys have any questions about our operations or who we are as a company, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you. And Adam won't say it, but the other item that I think is worth mentioning, especially in the environment we're in right now, is they laid off no people with COVID and they actually created a $2 million fund for their team members so that their individuals who were employed by Raising Canes that were struggling because of COVID, there were funds that were available for their employees. So I just thought that was evidence of how they're maybe a little different than some of the national brands that people might be used to. Mr. Mayor. Mike, are they keeping a liquor license? No. no. <laughs> There's no, no liquor license. Okay. Before you get started, I, I have one comment. This is the first time that we ever had somebody come up here and telling us what they're going to do to get back to the community. Kudos to you for that, because most everybody's looking what's in it for them, not what it's in for the community. We have some businesses in this township that have tons of businesses in this township, and they do nothing for the community. So I just want to give you kudos for that. Thank you. And then, Kevin, if you can just briefly uh, do a quick plan overview for council here. Sure, so I'll, I'll start off. Now, is he, is he a township, is he an engineer for you guys? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Kevin Tatlow with Does Bowler. he have to be sworn in or anything? No. Okay, go ahead. Um, good evening. So as you can see up on the screen, I'll zoom in a little bit to the, the site plan. Um, with taking down the existing um, Bertucci's there, the Raising Cane's uh, building itself will relatively be in the same footprint as where the Bertucci's is. And what we tried to do is minimize the impact to the existing site. So we tried to save the existing perimeter around Horizon Boulevard and the existing shared driveway, as well as um, there's an existing driveway in the rear that we're remaining open as well to serve the other, um, uh, uh, the Starbucks and the other um, um, retail uses along the rear. <clears throat> and as far as the, um, the drive-through, as you can see here, we have, it's a double drive-through lane with a bypass lane as well too. Um, and when we did is um, coming off the existing um, access way off Horizon Boulevard, what we did is um, there's that first access into the site. We made that a do not enter one way only to prevent cars from backing up into the rear drive aisle and into the, um, the common driveway off of Horizon Boulevard as well too. And then as far as the, the parking goes, we are providing um, a zoning compliant number of parking spaces out there as well. Okay, are there any questions for the engineer? Please. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. So I have one question regarding um, when I was looking at the plan on C10, I believe it was, um, where it showed the traffic pattern. And it showed coming in off of Horizon Boulevard at the top on the Starbucks side, it had an entrance and an exit, which is fine. But then it showed in front of the um, restaurant, it showed a two-way, and then on the left side, on the Cracker Barrel side, or that aisle side, another two-way, whereas everywhere else was kind of like a one-way kind of circle. So my only question was, my concern is if people are backing up and you have people coming this way and this way, there may be some confusion and some issue. So, so the driveways around it are a two-way. What we just did is provided a do not enter so that no one could come right in and make a quick left and potentially the drive-through stacking would go into that rear drive aisle. We wanted to make sure that so remained open. So it's really just for the people who are parking that can go back out the other way? Correct, yep. Okay. Yeah, we wanted to avoid anything impacting that rear drive aisle so it doesn't impact any other businesses back there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the engineer? Okay, just uh, we'll go through the uh, Yes, absolutely. Um, the uh, yes, uh, the letter from T and M that we have. The items that are listed under the zoning ordinance are will complies. 
I can go through these in the saldo, uh, but I will tell you they are all will complies until we get to number 17. Number six, uh, da, 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 that states that we have to provide a uh, color aerial existing features within 400 feet is what I have as number six. Are we on zone? Maybe. Oh, you're on, okay. On zoning. Mr. C6, you're on right? zoning. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Adam. So we, we have a, a sign package that's going to be submitted to the township. That is zoning compliant. Do you have a sign submitted? Yeah. Did we submit the package yet? No, no. we'll include the sign package with the details with the solution. But it's a will comply. It's a will comply. It's a will item, comply yes. with the sign. The the plan to the sign now, how high is the sign allowed to be? Approximately? Well, they're will complying with whatever the ordinance says. Okay. So they're not looking for a higher up or a bigger sign. Yeah, I just sign want to make sure they weren't putting like a real high sign to pull people off US one or no, no, it's, it's okay. going to be standard sign. Okay. Bertucci sign in the same place, same proportions. Okay. And sevens will comply. Okay, and how about under uh, subdivision land development? Is there any anything that you need? Everything you need? in the Saldo provision is a will comply until we get to comment number 17. Okay. Which deals with uh, street trees. Okay. And as is indicated, there are utilities that prohibit the planting of additional trees, but we are completely um, happy to provide a fee in lieu that would be required. In lieu of the trees, right? That's correct. In the advice yes. of our, our yes. engineer. Okay. And then number 19 is what I'll label partial waiver because there are, uh, there is a sidewalk and, and Kevin can detail uh, right now. You might want to yeah. just explain that. Sure. So it's a partial waiver because we are partially compliant, but we will provide a fee in lieu for what we're not complying with. We didn't want to alter the landscape plan beyond what we needed to do. But Kevin, if you can show what we're talking about here. Sure. So. Uh, for the existing driveway to the west of it, there's an existing bus stop here, mm -hmm. and there's a crosswalk across the driveway to just a concrete pad landing right here, and then to across Horizon Boulevard. So what we did was, uh, right now there's no street sidewalk access to the current Pertucci's, so what we're going to do is connect that existing concrete pad with a new sidewalk and crosswalk to be able to access the site so that anyone from the bus stop would be able to... Um, walk to the building right so the, the partial waiver request is to provide there's no existing street sidewalk along the frontage here um, so when we ask for a waiver for the street sidewalk but we would be providing a sidewalk into the into the property where there currently is one right now there's no street sidewalk all the way down correct that's, that's so. correct yeah and we would provide a fee in lieu for the rest of the frontage where we wouldn't be installing the sidewalk so that's why I have it labeled as a partial waiver request. Hey, Mr. Paisa, was there, when we okayed this, this development, did we get a fee in lieu of for all these places for no sidewalks there? Do we know that? Can we find that out? Because, I mean, if a fee in lieu of was already paid, why would we need another fee in lieu of? We can look into that. Uh Polarian, and obviously we can leave that as an open issue on the on the uh, approval if you're if okay. you'd like for us to the um, the it's it's been some time since we yeah since I, I didn't and, I knew and, you didn't know the and, answer and but Horizon was done in pieces over time so we can make a part of the motion that you know we'd look into it and it's not they are it's already been paid and we've already escrowed it. To do it again, I, I think would be sure. Okay. And then, uh, Bill, do you know, like, on the uh, not to jump around, but from the uh, Bucks County Planning Commission, it referenced the sidewalks. It said on number nine on page two, it said a sidewalk connection should be made between the curb ramp on 
Horizon Boulevard and the site. Now, I know we that's don't have what to. They're doing. Is, so they're doing that? Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's, that's what they're doing. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. And the ADA ramp details are all being done through PennDOT yeah. and everything. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, the only other waiver that we have is uh, everything else in Saldo is a will comply. The only other waiver request we have is comment two in the stormwater management ordinance with respect to our request to provide HDPE piping. Uh, and then, Kevin, if you can just briefly explain why that's necessary. Yeah, so there is existing stormwater infrastructure out there um, that ties across Horizon Boulevard and goes to an existing above ground basin. So with redoing the site, we added a couple inlets as well too. Um, so what we're requesting instead of doing 18 inch RCP pipe to do 12 inch to 15 inch HCP plastic pipe. Okay, and what, what number is that again under stormwater? That's number two, uh, the second comment in the stormwater management. Okay. Mr. Worst, are you in agreement with that? I am. We, uh, the previous engineer did request that we submit so, uh, capacity cap. Yep, yeah, we'll provide that stormwater yeah. calcs for that. that, that type of work, but that's so is that a partial waiver or is that uh, that's a waiver? <coughs> For that type of pipe, it would be a waiver for the type of pipe in the south. Okay, for 18 well. inches. Okay, so it would be conditioned upon them providing the, the additional data, and then Phil will make sure that it works. Okay. And what was that term, Phil? I didn't catch that. What, what? Capacity, count. Uh, capacity count. Okay, okay. And then everything else, Mr. Knowles, is a uh, will comply. Okay. All right, so any question? Any more questions from any of the council members that are here? I have nothing. I have nothing. Are you okay? Okay. Uh, is there, yeah. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak, public comment, for or against this, uh, or any comments or reference to this uh, plan? Okay. Now, the only product you have is chicken, just to be straight here, <laughs> the only product you have is chicken fingers? That's Correct. it? Correct. Okay, and I guess different quantities at least, right? You, know, you, you can so. get three, four, six. You can order pans of them. Yeah. My assistant's son I drives. I guess they're good, right? I mean, she drove, my assistant, I swear this is true. <laughs> Uh, when we were retained by Raising Cane's, my assistant, the first thing she did was call her son, and I could hear the, the loud, like, ex exclaiming on the phone because she drives 45 minutes. He drives 45 minutes to go to Raising Cane's. So that's, they've set a high standard. I'm looking oh, forward to trying it. I do have one thing I want to bring. There's one thing I would ask of you is uh, prepare, get prepared for a backup plan uh, for traffic in case you get it overrun like we do with a couple other chicken places that are here in Ben Salem to make sure that people can be get in and out safely so we don't have problems. So it wouldn't wouldn't be a problem for you guys to take a look and have a backup plan just in case something happens and we need to get traffic moving and sure of course. Yes. Yeah on anything on on you know on, that you don't anticipate happening that you work with Phil to correct, you know? We will. Okay, so I, anybody coming up for public comment? Seeing no public comment, uh, we, do we have a motion? Mr. President, I'll make a motion uh, for Raising Cane's Restaurant, 3617 Horizon Boulevard, tax parcel 02-001-018-028. Um, for their proposed restaurant that we give, we grant them a preliminary and final. And we have um, will comply on the zoning. We have a will comply with all of the subdivision land development with the exception of 17 and 18 will be a fee in lieu of. We will check on the sidewalks to see if they were paid in the, in the past on the fee of lieu of there. Um, and uh, on chapter 196 stormwater, um, we'll grant a waiver. Um, We'll Subject. check with the with the engineers and the and the township with their approval. Then that would be uh, that would be approved also. Mm -hmm. Mr. Paisa, did I miss anything? No, I don't believe so. Uh, item F uh, one to five are also will comply items. Um, I believe um, just as to item D number nineteen, Mr. Polari, um, confirming what you had said earlier. Partial waivers being granted, they will provide the sidewalk as shown on the plan. 
for that portion of the sidewalk that isn't being provided as otherwise required by the ordinance. Um, we'll look into whether a fee in lieu was previously paid. If not, then it won't be required this time. Uh, if I'm sorry, if it was previously paid, it will not be required this time. If not, then a fee in lieu of will be required. Is that what you? I'll intended, add that to sir? my yes. I'll add that to my uh, motion to part with the sidewalk. Very good. Then you can uh, take that money and help the animal shelter. If, uh, that's you know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we have a Woman's Humane Society right there. Uh, okay. Is there, uh, is there a second on the motion? I'll second the motion. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody against? Okay. All right. Congratulations. Welcome Thank to Ben's Welcome, Welcome to Ben's Welcome. Thank you very Looking much. Looking forward to try some new chicken. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be ready to go. Especially my son. Yeah. He loves <laughs> chicken tenders. We're big fans. Mike, are you done tonight? He's got everything tonight. Oh, you're up again? That's good. It'll keep. I'd say. Good job, Joe. Okay. I can. Yeah, so I was going to say. I asked if I could. He said I could if I had to. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Appreciate it. Okay. Number five on the agenda is uh, consideration of a lot line consolidation. J and B Associates Group LLC. Uh, and you're handling this one too. I am. I assume. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mike McGinnis here again um, on behalf of J&B Associates. Uh, this is simple and, and straightforward, I believe. Uh, this is for Pennsylvania Steel. Council might recall that we were in front of you in October to discuss the land development for 1717 Woodhaven Drive. This is the property that is directly across the street, uh, which Pennsylvania Steel also acquired. And John Rebell is with me, who's our engineer, is highlighting mm -hmm. there uh, the building which they acquired. They then uh, underwent a significant expenditure to uh, fit that building out as their corporate headquarters. Right. It looks beautiful. Um, we had this removed from a prior agenda because we needed to tweak something with the lot line change. But if you look at the site as it's presently constituted, it's very strange. Uh, you have the property that's being hovered over right now, which Pennsylvania Steel acquired. And then to the left of it on the plan, you have the tile works, yeah. which is still there. And then you have this weird elongated property uh, be that runs behind both parcels. So when Pennsylvania Steel came to the arrangement to purchase the property that they turned into their headquarters, it was discussed and agreed upon between PA Steel and Tile Works that there would be this lot line change here to create, basically eliminate this weird elongated property that doesn't have frontage and then to turn it into two parcels. So uh, assuming this is approved, the end result of this is going to be to eliminate that strange parcel uh, Pennsylvania Steel's parcel is going to be uh, is going to take a portion of it, and then the tile works will um, take the balance, and we will have two regularly shaped parcels instead of three highly irregularly shaped parcels. So uh, that's the the sum and substance of the lot line change. We have uh, TNM's review letter. It's only a couple comments. Everything in there is a will comply. There are no waiver requests, and we're just seeking to fix uh, these parcels, essentially. Okay. Yeah, they'll square, not square them off. Close, them closer. Le legitimate rectangles. Yes, <laughs> then instead of a weird puzzle piece. Yeah. And, I, and the tile place was in agreement with this, I would Correct. assume, where they yes. would be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, this seems pretty simple, uh, and he did do a nice job, and that building looks good. You know, yeah. I was down at the tile place, checked it out. Um, any questions from council in reference to this? Uh, Phil, do you have any concerns or? Not. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, uh, is there, we don't need a public comment on this, right, Joe? Just can't hurt to ask for it. Okay, yeah, if anybody has uh, any public comment, if anybody wants to say anything about this. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. Uh, any comments or questions from the council members? Seeing none, okay, does someone want to put a motion forward that we 
approve this? Mr. President, I'll make a motion for J&B Associates Group, LLC, 1620 Woodhaven Drive, tax parcel 02-060-014-001, that we approve the lot line change as presented. Okay, is there a second? I second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Well, Mr. Knowles, before you, yeah. before you call oh, I'm the sorry, question, Mr. Yeah. if we could just add as a, as a, as a condition, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McGinnis has already noted that, that they will comply with these. all of the items set forth in the engineer's April 7, 2021 review letter. Um, the only other um, condition that I would ask for is that uh, deeds for the two newly created lots mm -hmm. will be submitted to the township for review by the engineer and solicitor and that those deeds will be executed and recorded before or at the time of recording of the new record plan. Uh, very good, Mr. Pizer. The only note I would make is I, the last review letter I had <coughs> from TNM is December 20th, uh, which was post resubmission. So. Um, that, that would be the operative date is the, la the last review letter that I have. That's fine. I'll add that to my motion. Okay, and you want to amend the second? Yeah, and I'll amend the second. April 7th one's better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, in fact, it's the gold standard. <laughs> there, are, there are no conditions in it, so. I'll amend my second. Okay, so Mr. Polari amended his, his per Mr. Paiso's comments, and then the second was amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good okay. luck. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Knowles, I should note just for the minutes that uh, prior to the hearing, Mr. McGinnis did provide me with proof of notice of the hearing to the adjacent property owners, um, and those notices are in order. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, the minutes should reflect that Mr. McGinnis provided me with those notices for the Raising Canes hearing as well. So if okay. you could just put those into the minutes, Debbie, and those notices also appear to be in order. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Another one? Gosh. Number, number six was moved to a date certain. Did we? Yeah, we made that. We actually work. moved it, right? So Johnson's is the uh, 24th. Okay, consider, and they're going to let us know they need more time. Okay, consideration of uh, number seven on the agenda, consideration of lot line consolidation, Jack Lyons, J.D. Party, Realty, LP. All right, good evening. Uh, Mike McGinnis on behalf of the applicant, J.D. Partners, Realty. Uh, this is a lot line change for two properties that are located on Byberry Road. The addresses are 1700 Byberry and 1682. Uh, the Property, if you're looking on the plan on the left, is home to Nishamani Electric, and then the property next to it is a single-family detached residential dwelling. We appeared in front of the Zoning Hearing Board a couple months ago and just received a couple of dimensional variances to facilitate this lot line change. If you look at the present condition, it is a highly irregularly shaped lot. It's a diagonal lot that literally touches the Nishamani Electric Building. And the residential lot has this very large side yard. Uh, and while my client was still the owner of both lots, was looking to rectify the situation because he's expended funds to clean up the residential piece and is going to be selling the residential property. And while he had the opportunity to do so, is moving the lot line to essentially create uh, a residential parcel which has almost equal side yards and then give the industrial property a side yard as is reflected on the plan. The residential parcel is still over 20,000 square feet so it's not creating a small, yeah, a small property there. Um, everything else here I, I think is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, we're the review letter from TNM. I think there's only three comments. They're all well complies, and we think this is going to be a better composition for the lot moving forward than it's currently constituted. And I do have Patrick Cavanaugh, who's the, the surveyor, uh, who's prepared the plan with us in case there's any technical questions. Okay. 
Okay, is the residential property is on Byberry Road, right? Correct. Uh, was it was it just, was it for sale before? Was it uh, was it was the property just for sale? Like there, six nine months. My ago. client. Oh, six. When did it go up for sale, Ray? Uh, I have said. I'm sorry. Ray Starsman is is with me as well. So a couple months ago, I know, right, right? Yeah, in the fall. Right, right. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was the right property. Yeah, it was yes, like, I was. I still own. He's still the record owner of the property. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out the lot line. Actually, it was very confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of on the phone. I'm like, what do you mean? You know, I couldn't even figure out where the yard was. You know. Yes. And then someone was cutting the grass the same, so we couldn't figure it out by the grass cutting. You know? Right. Uniform <laughs> ownership. Just so. Where is the line going between the house? Is this the so back of the? So if you look. Like the, uh, what's being highlighted right now would be the new line, so we're squaring it off. And the house is to the left, right? The house is to the right. It's oh, oh, right okay, there. That's facing back. Okay. And uh, it's a much. It's still a larger uh, residential lot than uh, the vast majority of the residential lots right there. Uh, it, you, you look at that and you think, oh, this might be an undersized lot because of the proportions. It's no, not. It's, huge. it's still yeah. it's still a very yeah. large residential lot, but you now have a straight lot line. And the garages are on the other side of the house for the garage. Correct. The house, right? Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, the, the new side yard, it's not like we're conveying this so that the industrial property will now have residential components in it. It's a uh, a vacant side yard that would be part of the Nishamni Electric okay. property. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, it was a huge field. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, are there any waivers or anything that you need on this? No waivers. No. Uh, any questions from any of our council people in reference to this? No. Okay, Phil, you don't see any issues with this, right? No, sir. Right, okay, I didn't think so. Okay, uh, is there anybody in the audience that's for or against this uh, project? Okay, and then the notices, did they have to go out on this, Joe? Mr. Paizo? Okay. Uh, any questions uh, for anybody from council? Hearing none, is there, uh, has someone put a motion forward? Mr. President, I'll make a motion for Jack Lyons, JD Park Realty LP, 1700 Byberry Road and 1682 Byberry Road, tax parcels 02-045-058 and 02 033-103. We approve the land development as presented. Um, all items in zoning and land development, uh, subdivisional land development, are all will complies. Okay, and then uh, do we want? Do we need deeds recorded on this, Joe? Yes. Uh, same conditions as uh, in the previous lot line change, and that would be we'd ask that uh, deeds for the newly created lots be submitted to the. Uh, township for review and approval by the township engineer and the township solicitor and that those deeds be executed and recorded before or at the time of the recording of the record plan. What's that? Yes, yes. Mr. Polari is with the motion. That's correct. Right. Incorrect. We haven't had a second yet, but I'm sure I think That's it's not what be. she's saying, Joe. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Is it correct? Okay. I said 103. The second one is 02 33 105. Sorry about that. Okay. And uh, I'll add uh, to my motion to, to allow on change information. Okay. And is there a second on the motion? I second the motion. Okay. The first and the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Right, thank you very much. Have, Have a great, great evening. Night. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Roll tie. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I thought there was, I thought there was no, she was trying to find me. I yeah. said 03 instead of 05. Yeah. No. yeah. Just now it's corrected for the record. So. Yeah. Okay, number eight on the agenda consideration of land development extension agreement for VIP Wireless Holdings LLC. Uh, Mr. Paizo, do you have this? or? Yes, um, as uh, will occur from time to time, council um, in a 
approving your land developments, uh, time periods for completion of the projects are set forth in the development agreements. Um, when the developers, for any number of reasons, um, are unable to hit those benchmarks, uh, they will come in and ask for an extension of time of the, uh, uh, of the development agreement um, by way of the document in front of you, a land development extension agreement. Um, the agreement in front of you um, is asking for the extension to go out until the end of this month, January 29, 2022. Um, it seems a little short. If I make a suggestion, perhaps we extend it out to the first day of March just to build in that extra month um, in light of the, the weather that uh, uh, we've had and is in the forecast. The, the end of March, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They are asking for 60 days. I'd suggest 90, day, 90 days or 120. Yeah, that seems. If council is of a mind to grant the extension, uh, it would be our recommendation that you do so, subject to review of their escrows by the township engineer and the finance department to make sure that sufficient funds remain in the escrow for the completion of the project. So moved. Okay, and would you, is that okay, 120 days, Joe? Yep. Okay. That's so what Mr. Paisa said, and that's yep. what I'm okay. and, so uh, moving. So we'll make that 120 days, and that's the motion. Uh, I second the motion. Second? second? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Okay. And then for item number nine on the agenda, Mr. Knowles is another land development extension agreement. This one is for Waterside Phase 1. Um, the developer in this case is asking for an extension of the development agreement for an additional six months out to June 30, 2022. Council is of a mind to grant the extension. Again, we recommend you do so, subject to the condition that the uh, township engineer and the finance department form an audit of the escrow to make sure that sufficient funds remain in the escrow account for the completion of the project. Okay, or at least question. phase one of the project. Uh, do, do we expect phase one to be done at that point, June 30th? Uh, I would defer to the township engineer on that uh, as to what the status of the project is. And Mr. Worcester may be at something of a disadvantage as to that question in as much as T&M has been shepherding it throughout uh, up to this point. Before. Thank you. But Quentin may know. Uh, that's Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Paizo. Uh, Quentin Neuron's here with, uh, with TPD, and he can uh, respond to the, the question of how far along Waterside is. Okay. So phase one's pretty much completed. Um, T&M actually was finishing up a punch list at the time of the transfer, so we should have that punch list by the end of the week, hopefully this week. So there's only a couple of outstanding items that I'm aware of, except for minor punch list items. So there should be no problem getting the work completed. Okay. There's been a whole list of stuff sent from the Homeowners Association about things that are supposed to be done that haven't been done. And it, it's just getting to the point where Waterside has, just has that I don't care attitude. And I'll tell you what, if we're not gonna start doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, it's gonna be very difficult for me to want to approve extensions when they don't take care of the things for the homeowners like lights so people can see where they're where they're walking to their houses and right. you know flooding issues and things of that nature um you know we're just allowing them too much leeway and not getting done the work so extensions and and giving back uh, you know their escrows and stuff without getting everything done is getting harder and harder for me to, to, to I did off. receive those HOA complaints from uh, Kent Barrow last week because mm -hmm. I was actually off for a little bit. Um, I did send an inspector in there this morning to check on some uh, signage, curbing, sidewalks and stuff like that. I went in before the meeting to see about the lighting. I did talk to one of the um, Lennar reps. They did say that one area was hit by a tree installation. So that's one of the areas of phase two that's actually out right now. He's not sure when that's being done because it's not his division, 
Um, so we're going to be going through and kind of using a light plane, just so you know. We are looking to get them a list this week on all those issues. But so. Lenore, it's my, not my job, not my job, not my job, not my job, and I'm getting sick and tired of not my job. Right. You've got a development of that size, and you keep asking for, for extensions and waivers and starting the next phase, and are not completing what they should be completing in one, two, um, going into three. Right. I mean, I still don't know if we have the open space situation down there. Um, in phase one and phase two under control yet, but I mean, these are things we need that. to get under control, so. Stacey, you have a question? Actually, my, <clears throat> I'm following up with Joe Polari there in terms of that, in terms of the open space. I know that um, from my attendance to various meetings that um, it has been a question in terms of when will the public be able to go down there to be able to utilize the space itself. The riverfront. <clears throat> the riverfront right. area specifically on there. And I know that they're in a phase construction in phase one, but it does seem that it, and I understand construction, I understand that there's delays and everything, but it seems to be that it's, as Mr. Polari has stated, it's been a continual request for extension upon extension, and it's not necessarily fair to all the other residents that have been looking forward to the mayor's vision of a waterfront revitalization be able to go down and use an area in Ben Salem for the general public, which we really have not necessarily had um, in a long time. I'll find out for you what their status is. I know, like I said, I haven't been down here too much because I've had other inspectors. Uh, phase three is under construction. I know that's a lot of the area that you're talking about. I believe phase one area is completed, but I'll have to double check on the punch list when we do get that. Yeah, because it was a safety issue to hold off and them opening up part from, of the river from phase front. three. Yeah. Well, in the beginning of phase one, too, because there was okay. construction there at one point. And so mm -hmm. we didn't let the public go down there because of cranes and mm -hmm. trucks and stuff. So uh, the question to ask tomorrow is when they, they complete phase one, are they going to partially open part of the riverfront uh, to the public or do they have to wait till phase two is done because the equipment gets... Well, you know, you know phase, I mean? phase one is actually done as far as I know. There's a couple of detention basins between Dock Street and the river itself. Uh, phase two kind of begins like a walk path that goes into phase three. And I know phase three is not completed at all. Which are more of the trails and more areas, of the trails, which correct. I do understand that part I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Is there areas within phase one that were supposed to be open to the general public? As far as I know, they're open. I mean, there's an area of, um, from Dock Street, there's a sidewalk, but then there's detention basins in the pond. So on the southern side of the, um, of the project, there's like a like an overlook area, I guess you could say. Okay. That, that's been open for a while. Okay, well, um, but you, you can't, I'll have to look in to see you look, all get, the, get us an update on yeah, what, I'll get you an update where, the next where meeting. that's at. So we can provide some is. communication too to the public because, okay. you no, know, I just came on and I thought it was pretty much primarily closed unless you okay. yeah, went yeah. there since it was a site I'll of look into that for you. Thank you, Quentin. And, and Mr. President, there, there's other issues associated with water side with, with regard to lingering work regarding roadways and so forth. So we we'll do a comprehensive update as far as what's going on with that. And many of those residents don't know phase one, phase two, from three, from nothing. They're, they just want to know when they can traverse the whole site. So well, yeah. The, the home so, um, Homeowners Association knows what's going on there and what should be done and what shouldn't be done. Uh, Mr. Paizo, can we send a message to uh, Lenore and let them know that they need to start finishing these things and getting them done in a timely fashion or extensions and escrow releases are going to be more and more difficult? Yes, I'll coordinate with, uh, with the engineers once the punch list is up and we have an idea of what we believe to be an appropriate amount of time for, for those items to be addressed and we'll ask them to please expedite it to the extent they can or, um, as you said, the council will be holding their feet even even more to the fire as we move forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, no other questions. Uh, is there a motion to? Well, I, I do have one other okay, thing. Okay, I'm sorry. This says um, water size phase one LLC, but Quentin, you said water size one is done. Why do we need an extension if we're under three? They haven't received the punch list yet for phase one. They just requested that recently from us. So that's why TNM went in to do an overall punch list of everything out in phase one. That's what they're generating for us. So really the only improvements they would have to do would be anything that's on the punch list. 
Right, that's what I'm saying. So by June 30th, they should be completely done mm -hmm. and have an answer, like a, 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 some kind of an announcement, what portion of the riverfront is available to the public. If well, we could get an answer all. on that quicker than June 1st. Right, okay. It's open. But that would give them time in the spring to go in and do any kind of grading, paving, concrete work, or anything like that to finish out phase one. Okay. Did, did you say Punch phase two is done? Phase two is not 100% done. They need wearing course um, and stuff like that, but all the building units are actually, I'm not sure if they're all occupied, but the building construction is done in phase two. So we'll be getting them a punch list on that too and staying on top of them, uh, top of them ahead of time. Correct. So that we're not giving them another two years into it and then worrying about, I mean, phase one has been yeah. pretty much completed for a long time. Right. I believe phase two, from what I recall talking with um, the inspectors, they're looking, trying to get out of that paid wise this uh, summer spring. Mm -hmm. yeah, spring and summer. So okay. the six month extension then to June 30th is really because of the outside work for paving and concrete work due to weather and things. That well, that'll be for the punch list. On Once the punch they get list, the punch list, then they can schedule that <clears throat> and just get, they'll have warmer weather for that time period to get everything done in that time. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the land development extension agreement for Waterside phase one LLC. Um, with the stipulation that we do an audit on all the escrows and things of that nature to make sure that we have enough in in uh, in escrow to cover anything that needs to be done. I'll make a mo um, the motion that we approve as presented. Okay. Is there a second? I second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 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 Uh, consideration of a reduced permit fee for Ben Salem School District. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Paizo? Uh, certainly. Um, again, this is consistent with um, the township's policy, uh, particularly as it pertains to uh, permit applications from the school district. In this case, it's the uh, annual fire alarm <laughs> inspection um, being performed uh, in this case for the uh, for the um, uh, administration building, the, the Dorothy Call Administrative Center at 3000 and Allen Drive. Um, the school district is asking for the 50% um, waiver, and that is what township has routinely granted. Uh, in this case, it would be a reduction from $534 down to $267. Okay, any questions? No. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion that we accept? I'll make a motion we approve as presented. Okay, second? Second. Okay, all in favor? <clears throat> Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, number 11 on the agenda, uh, consideration of escrow releases for VIP wireless holdings, release number one, 1141 Ford Road, 98,318.75. Uh, Mr. Paiso, do you have this? Uh, this will be Mr. Uh, Mr. Worst. Uh, thank you, Mr. Paisa, Mr. President. Uh, yes, we're recommending the escrow releases as shown on the, the uh, council agenda. The first one is for VIP Wireless Holdings, 1411 Ford Road. Originally requested an amount of $122,918.13. Uh, based upon our recommendation, we're, we're recommending a release of 98000 $318.75, which will be a, a remaining amount of $24,599.38. And I guess, that, that, I guess that, you did that to give you enough that, money that's to through cover. the remainder of the work. Okay. Good job. That's okay. Any, that's number one. I don't know if you want them separate. separate. Yeah, we'll do okay. them separate. Yep. Okay. okay so, uh, is there any questions for uh, Phil in reference to VIP wireless holdings? No. Okay, is there a motion to accept as recommended? I'll make a motion we approve as presented, subject to audit by the finance department. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And Mr. President, I have number two. You got number two, you're just definitely, yeah, Foley Cat, right? Yeah, Foley Cat, uh, we're, uh, the escrow release for Foley Cat at 2975 Galloway Road. Uh, they've requested 
$865.25 be released, which is all inclusive. We're recommending that this release in that amount of $65,865.25 uh, be released. Uh, they've uh, completed their work. Okay, so there's not, nothing to be followed up, okay? All right, so uh, is there a motion that we accept uh, the recommendation and the uh, request for a full escrow release? So move. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. Does anybody want to come up for public comment? Good evening, Council. Joe Connolly, 568 Bristol Pike. Uh, last time I was here, uh, Mr. Plary told me to go up to the commissioner's meeting up in Doylestown, which I did. And I, I spoke to them, and Gail Humphrey, the commissioner's secretary, they did an overlay of my property, and they said, indeed, my neighbor's property, uh, Poppy's property, my property line runs through his building. They did an overlay. Uh, the dirt pile, I'd like to find out when the dirt pile is going to be removed off of my property. It's been like a, you know, a lot of years now. I've been coming here for a lot of years. So far, I spent $250,000 hiring 13 land surveyors that marked my property incorrectly. The one surveyor, Stantec, they, they surveyed the property for Holy Family University in 2017. I don't know how they could do it right because the deed has been incorrect since 1942 by Edward Pickering Courts, their deed description. So how do you how do you mark a property correctly with a bad deed? Again, that's a county issue. A county yeah, issue. Well, the dirt pile, they, they said the dirt pile would be a township issue, Mr. Blair. Well, the dirt pile. And the dirt maybe. pile. Yeah. Okay. Where's the, Phil, where are we with the dirt pile getting that moved? Or Quentin, one of you can answer that question. Because I thought it was already all removed, but. So right now, portion of the dirt from 634 Bristol Pike has been removed. There's still about 3,000 yards to be coming out. As we've obtained prices from different contractors for a hauling of the material out. I don't know if they've been, been finalized yet. I know they were waiting on some confirmation on one contractor. So I'd have to follow up with Ken Farrell on that to see what the status is. Okay, so you report back to us with a, a date Correct. of when this will be totally moved. So Mr. Connolly no longer has to have that problem. Correct going on to his property. And, right. and, and it can be removed in this weather, right? It doesn't matter, right? They can... Yeah, we can remove it. Yeah. We have the, there's actually, we have two two or three locations that we know of that we can take the dirt to. So okay. So we're just really just getting the prices from the contractors for us to haul it out. I know the owner, Mr. Popley, did say before he authorizes the township to do that work, he wants to know what the prices are because it was coming out of his escrow fund that he posted with the township. So. Yeah. He can okay, so, we have, so we have the money to take care of that, sure. and we're getting prices on getting it yeah, done. We already obtained the prices. We're just trying to finalize he, everything at this point. He can want to know all he wants. It's got to be removed, and right. he's not removing it, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. And as far as the lot line goes, that's the county that has right. to change I, that I just can't understand why I hire all these surveyors, and not one of them will mark my property correctly. Again, it's not our problem. I, I understand it's not that. It's a township problem. It's, and even like, the, the, uh, like Michael Kerner, my one attorney, charged me 25 grand. We're getting ready to go in front of the judge. He walks in and puts a pen in my hand. He wants nothing to do with me. In again, front of the judge. Again, Joe, this is because a county Because somebody, somebody again, got to Joe, here. Again, Joe, this is a county problem, not a township problem. Again, I can, can't say Well, you have say somebody in the county helping you, so. Yeah, I can't say it any, but like, any I understand that, but you. like when Poppy gets a drive through I don't know if you've ever seen it there, I've but they go all the way out to the road. How does he get that approved? Everybody has to come in, in front of council to get things approved. It was approved at council. It was approved when their land development was done. It was approved. It was approved? Yes. Okay. Was well, how, how was it approved if that building is on my property? Again, it's it, we're going by the deed that is in place. The deed, right. Saying, the deed's incorrect. His deed's incorrect since 1942. Show, show, me, the, show me the new deed, Joe. Give us the new deed showing what you're saying. Not only we can I show you, Mr. Plurry, I not only can I show you the deed, but I can show you a letter from Pickering Courts I don't who, gave, who gave me a get, letter get, stating that his deed's incorrect. Get the deed. You want me to bring it to you? Give it to our attorney. 
I could give it to you. I, well, I showed him the uniform partial identifier law. Did you got, established did you, in did 1988. Did you get the change? Your partial is your partial. Did the county change the? Did the county change it, Joe? No. What they okay, to then do, there's nothing we can do. Oh, if the county doesn't change your lot line, I've never met there's so many nothing we can do. People in my entire life. Okay, very good, Joe. This, Thank this, you I very much. Legal right. matter too, I know so it's it's fine. Yeah. What's okay. fine? What it's a, just it's a legal this. matter. It's it's with it's the county. It's a matter. We can yeah, do it's nothing. A county. But the problem is, like the problem is back I, in '84, no, Bob Owender, Bob yeah, Owender put the legal addition we, there. Again, it's the county, Joe. Oh well, no, they said it's, it's the, the county. township. No, They're it's telling not. me it's a township. You're telling me it's a Mr. county. Mr. Paizo. I mean, I don't know. How, how can the county say it's our problem when, it, when uh, they're responsible for deeds and so forth? If, if the county has identified uh, a, a I'm ready, error, I'm you. <laughs> an error in the deeds, uh, no one at the county has identified anyone at the township that any such problem exists. And as you've stated, Mr. Polari, if, there, if the county has identified a, an error that needs to be addressed, county tax mapping, County, county should notify us as to what that, that problem is, because at this point, our engineers are relying upon deeds of record in the Office of the Recorder of Deeds of Bucks County. That's the plans from which uh, the, the, the land developments down there on all properties have been reviewed and approved. And so if the county is aware of a flaw, um, then they, they can bring it to our attention and it can be dealt with. But uh, as of this date, Neither Gail Humphrey nor any individual of which I'm aware has reached out to the township to say that that there is any inconsistency, irregularity, or inaccuracies uh, as they pertain to that lot line. Well, and it, and the, if the county had a defect in the deed, they would have to correct it and and put and the I, deeds and, out, right? And I don't know that the county can sui sponte do that by itself. Again. Yeah. The quiet title action was was pursued by Mr. Uh, Connolly against Mr. Popley. That uh, did not result in any legal action or any order of the court saying that the, the either that the deeds are inaccurate, that the lot lines are inaccurate, or that there are any changes to be made. No such order has come from the court, again, of which I'm aware or that I've seen, indicating that that any such problems exist despite the uh, Mr. Connolly having brought a quiet title action uh, in Doylestown. And, and then that's why you have a title insurance right. to cover you from that. And they would be entitled, they would have to go, you'd have to go after them for all the money that you've paid to do what you're doing. Uh, I've been that trying. Uh, I, Mr. Plary, I've been trying. 250 grand I spent so far. I, Joe, I understand I mean, it's that. outrageous. I mean, you know, even like Gilmore. Gilmore did the subdivision plan when it used to be an Andalusia drive-in. And they subdivide that property, Gilmore. Okay, Gilmore Associates. Well, when I called Gilmore and asked them how many feet are on the end of the property, they said, well, we don't know. We didn't survey that side. Well, how do you subdivide a property and you didn't survey that side? You got to survey both sides. And there ain't no, if you look at his, his drawing, there ain't no number on there. It's illegal. They were, they were hiding something back in from 84. When again, Bob Owner put the illegal addition there. Again, Joe, you have title insurance to cover you. The county has to change where where the lot lines are in that it's not I'm a going to go to the next commissioner's meeting and I'm going to get everyone that's, that's, that's you should that's do that's fine yeah yep that's fine but you keep calling us corrupt and say well, we're it, corrupt it, and dirt pile, it has nothing to do with but the dirt pile definitely has something to do with you we're getting and it we're getting it taken care of well, I've been here since 2016 I mean <laughs> come on Joe hit three he's quarter, operating well, the three quarter of it it's not only that a bulk, uh, the bulk of it's gone right Mr. Knowles not only that they're living upstairs in that place I have my cameras PTZ's facing his building, I could give you video of people leaving and going in the middle of the night at the back door. I got film of it, that they're living upstairs. Well, he's not allowed to live upstairs. But this guy has special powers. He can do whatever he wants with the Ben Salem. No, I don't think so. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> He does, he, he does not have special I don't powers. Know how he got the, as you as as, as I don't you know how he got the drive as you've been as you've been advised in the past, Mr. Connolly, if you have a, a complaint to make to the township, if you have evidence that you want to submit to the building and planning department, they will investigate. Every time that you've given information to the township, <clears throat> we've gone out and investigated. When we've found violations, they've been cited. When the, site, when the violations haven't been cured, we've prosecuted. That will continue to be the case, as has been the case historically 
uh, as it applies to that property and any other property in the township. So by all means, tomorrow morning, if you have information to share with Mr. Um, Farrell. Ken Farrell, Ken Farrell uh, as to what's going on in the neighboring property, please share it with him. Yeah, like I said, I got the fines. The one day I get home, I got 7,000 worth of no fines. One, no oh, one sitting up here has the minute. power to enforce, but Mr. It, but Mr. Farrell and his here. staff do. So give it to Mr. Farrell and his staff tomorrow. I, I understand that, but the, I, the one day I come home from work, I'm, I'm raising three kids by myself, all right? I come home from a day's work for eight years. I, I'm getting fined after fine after fine. And the last time I get home, I got $7,000 worth of fines in my mailbox, okay? So I had to fight him. I went in front of Judge Gallagher, guilty, 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 guilty. Build a wall on the Lafayette Gardens apartments. I didn't build it. Thousand. Maximum fine it was. Maximum fine for build, having no railing. Maximum fine for water. You should see the water running through my property, from Poppy's property. And I get the fine. As an American, I feel really screwed here in Ben Salem. And I'm trying to sell my property, but I can't sell it with a tax map line running right through his building that Bob Olander built illegally in 84. And again, and you guys a, knew about that. That's a county issue. No, I, I, it, it's not, Joe. Yeah. The county like I has- said, but, but I should, Mr. Clary, I shouldn't have to come here for all these years about the dirt pile alone. That dirt pile shouldn't have been there in the first place. I'm, I'm it's not, hard in my house. I'm not gonna argue that point with you, but I have I, the I, lot line change is what your biggest issue is, and I keep telling you it's not us, it's a county issue. Right. You keep coming back here well, they say you and gotta calling, get a us, calling they, they, us corrupt and saying that we're corrupt, we're letting this guy do all this, well, but I, it has nothing to do with us. It's well, a county my, issue. Let me ask you something. Yes, my sir. deed says two hundred and twenty eight feet in the back wide. Okay? So if you go to the state that Re, uh, Lee Royer put in, my last surveyor, if you go to that stake to the fence from Lafayette Gardens, I got 179 feet. Well, he gave me a letter. Your deed says uh, 228 more or less. Could more or less be 50 feet? Could that be 50 feet more or less? Well, take it up with the county. That's it's, why they have. That's why they have. You're hired a professional. Where's it's, the Where's the report, Joe? I got it. You want Where to is it? it? I've asked you for it a hundred times now, and I, you've I yet can, to give it to me. How about we meet at the township no, tomorrow, I, and I can show you? All. Well, you, when I went to the commissioner's meeting, they wouldn't even let me pull my paperwork out. They didn't even want to see my paperwork. Joe, you're. I'd be like, if I handed Joe, this fellow a, a letter. Joe, your battles with the commissioner is not with us. It's not a county issue. It's, it's a county issue, not so a county issue. I got to go up there because when I did go there, they didn't want me to go up there on camera and get it recorded. They did everything they could. To, they had some lady come over to me. Let's go up to the fifth floor. We'll bring it. I said, no, no. I want to get this recorded. So I told the commissioners that I'm paying somebody else's property tax. That's consumer fraud. Joe. Okay. Again, and that's, then, that's and then the criminal case. fraud is when you hire an, uh, like an attorney okay. and you hire a land surveyor because there's a law against that. Okay. When you hire a land surveyor, they got to be honest by law. Why are you beating us up with that when it's a county issue, Joe? You keep bringing this here, and we keep telling you it's yeah, a well, county I'm issue, for the dirt not a pile And how, how Mr. Poplar gets away with everything. That, that's a township issue. Well, we said we're taking care of the dirt and pile. And you were told. But how long have you been saying that, Mr. Mr. Uh, I, no, well, I, I couldn't physically get the dirt. We're at a I point mean, how many years have I been hiring, here? We're well, hiring. Most of it's gone, isn't it? Well, let me ask you something. When you move that dirt pile, do you got to have an engineering drawing, or can you just move it? Uh, yes, you engineering drawing? I think they looked they, at they it. Have you have to have one, right? They have them. I, I've been asking for it. Well, can I get one? It's not. It, you can make a request. Can I make a request to get an engineering? Submit, a, re see, submit, submit a request to building. He's trying to tell you what to do. Submit a request to, when you come in tomorrow with the information on Mr. Pop, Popley's property. Submit a request to building and planning to see a copy of the permit. Yeah, I like to, because I've been asking for it. This, Again, this way, we, can put a, a we, we, we have procedures, Mr. Connolly. If you want a copy of a document, you submit a request, and it will be provided to you by the Building and Planning Department. Yeah. That's all. Well, That's it. I understand. But I see even like the fines. You know, when you come home, and you have all these bogus fines, and you hire this guy, Robert Whitney. He gets you for twenty grand, and he works with the court system. You know, it's a whole. You guys are all together. You know what I mean? Again, the politicians. Again, hey, again, come again, on, man. Are, don't tell me that. Are, are hey, we know you all hooked up. Are you, are you done? Are you done? Not, are you done calling I'm us corrupt? I'm a taxpayer. I can, I can stay here all night. Are you done calling us corrupt? Not yet. No. Okay, well. Can I stay here a little longer? I'm a taxpayer. You can do whatever you want. I know I can. I know I can. But it's not getting anything solved. Because yeah, because I've been listening. coming here for years. Because you've been told every time what to do. Well, after I've been told, I come home and i got another 7,000 worth of fines. 
Bogus fines. Like, I mean, bogus fines. Did you pay them, Joe? Huh? Did you pay them? Listen, I went in front did of Judge Gallagher. Guilty, guilty, Joe, guilty, guilty. Did guilty. you pay them? Then I and went up to, wait so a minute. Answer my question. Did you pay the $7,000 in fines? Listen, I wasn't going Joe, to pay them. You, I was not going did, to pay them. Did you, did you pay them, Joe? No. You know why I didn't pay them? Why, Joe? Because I put an article in the newspaper. And I let everybody know, all, it cost me seven grand. And every zone in Bucks County, I'm sure you see my article. Bucks, and what they, Bucks County? Yeah, Bucks every, County? every. Where's Bucks County got to do a Ben Salem? Well, it's in every Bucks County zone. They have like 10 zones. And the I put it in every zone. Okay? Huh? I, you guys could laugh, but I wish you were going through what I was going through. I'm not la Where, Joe, you, where you're paying your, your neighbor's property tax. Joe, that's not the reason. On your building. So that's the reason you didn't pay the fine because you took an ad out of the paper. Tops 25 inches to get a car high enough to get the car to the window of an office building, okay? Blacktop's 25 inches, never had to go to land development because Quinton said, well, he didn't, he didn't disturb 1,000 square feet. He put 25 inches of blacktop and all the water's running through my property. I got a gutter going through my property right now that's making people trip, okay? And do I, does, Mr. Clare, you said we don't allow water to run on other people's property in Ben Salem. That's what the law says. That's what the law says. And you've seen the water coming on my property. I saw it coming from the dirt pile. I, I, yeah. Yeah, in yeah, right. the parking okay. lot. But Mr. Paiso told you if you have complaints. That's a township about issue. Are you going to let me finish? You gonna let me finish? Mm -hmm. Mr. Paiso just told you if you have issues with these things, put them in writing to the to the building and planning department, and they'll go out and they'll get you the answers to what your what your complaints are. We don't handle that. We're we're a different body. That's handled by the administration. So you, you can get those answers here, but you can come to the meetings here every time and yell at us because the county doesn't fix your lot line and the dirt pile is almost gone. We're de at that final point. It's just a matter oh, of going. It should have been there in the first place. Joe, you're a taxpayer in Bucks County too, aren't you? Yeah, yes. Then go to the county commissioners and I'll tell them there, Believe me, Mr. I, you know, the thing is I'm trying to work, run a business. You know, and, and it's really tough to go up there and run a business. Well, the lot line change has nothing to do with us, though. Well, I mean, lot the, line the, change. The, your, your deed is yeah, but the problem is by the county. Ben Salem let them, Mr. Olander, Bob Olander, build the legal edition in '84. That sure never happened back then. Yeah, but you have multiple attorneys that you tried to have help M multiple. you with this. Multiple, yeah, but all of them are corrupt. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, there's not Michael one. Turner, there's not one. Robert Whitney. There's not Leo one. Leo White. There's, How about Stantec? How how's it? How does a, a, a surveyor survey a property with a bad deed and put a concrete monument in? How does that happen? How do you survey? And you know what? Every other surveyor goes off of that monument that's wrong. And that okay. one surveyor will give me an out to certified survey. Well, ho hopefully you'll get satisfaction from well, the county. Well, you're in real estate. You ever hear the UPI number? No. You ever, you ever, you, that's a uniform partial identifier. I don't I'm know if anybody a, ever I'm heard of that. A, I'm not a surveyor. No, but you're, you're in the real estate. The surveyors use what well, the he's a, gives them as the Uniform model. partial identifier. That's a law. That's the area that you're paying taxes on. Well, I'm paying his property tax. Did you go to the county with Go the to the county. county. I'm going to, believe me. I'll be going there. I thought you just said you went there. I did go there. And they're not doing anything about it. He's going uh, well, they all got him in a so meeting. Go, go they got the me meeting. in a meeting, go to and they meeting. tried to tell me my deed's incorrect. Go, go to their that's meeting. what they tried to tell me, go, go. that my, my go, deed's go. wrong. Why are you beating us up about something that's not our problem? It, it come on. You, 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 us, the Joe. dirt pile is your problem. And I'm getting fined. It cost me 20 grand for, for Robert Whitney. I paid 20 grand. Okay. For, okay. for a erosion fine. All right, Joe. We'll, 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 well, follow, just, we'll follow up on the we'll follow up on the dirt pile. I want like to know how you would feel. We're, we're gonna, I know when that. I would Jesse not. was suing you guys. You started saying, "Oh, the lawyer fees, five hundred eighty dollars." Hey, how did it feel to pay that? I, Joe, it didn't feel good, did it? I hope I hope you make out. Oh, I'm going at to, the I Bucks County this because it's corrupt. It's, okay, well, I hope I hope you correct it. Criminal. All right. Well, yeah. All right. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you next time. I'll okay. See you next time. All right, is anybody else for public comment? Anybody else for public comment? Seeing no one else come forward, we'll uh, close public comment. All right, other business. Do we have any other business, Phil, that you're aware of? No, sir. Okay, no other business? Okay, Mr. Uh, uh, we'll start with the mayor. Mayor, do you have uh, anything you'd like to say? Um, I wish we could solve his problem, but we can't. Uh, anyway, uh, starting next week, 
Martin Luther King's birthday starting Unity Week here. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to visit all of the uh, houses of worship this year to be uh, streamed live, except for the very last one, on Friday of, of next week, will be at St. Ephraim's, and that'll be a uh, live and uh, closing to the week's uh, celebration. So, uh, COVID is, uh, continues to ruin all of our plans. Uh, hopefully it's on its way out and we can uh, enjoy things a better way and hopefully our two uh, council people don't have COVID, they're just sick. Uh, and I think a lot of people are getting colds. Yeah, flu, and the flu's the flu going around too. Yeah. Going around, so hopefully that's the case. Uh, other than that, uh, welcome to your first meeting, Stacy. Thank you, sir. And uh, I know uh, I talked to Michelle Benitez today, and she was so upset because she couldn't make her first meeting. Yeah, she was, she was. So anyway, uh, that's all I have, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Phil, do you have anything extra? Or that you need? No, yeah. Okay, Mr. Paizo, do you have anything? Dad? No, I do not. Thank you. Okay, uh, Stacy, would you like to? Uh... I look forward to uh, everybody participating as much as they can next week with the uh, virtual for Unity Week, and I look forward to seeing people at St. Ephraim's that Friday. So, and um, have a uh, safe, warm evening and stay warm and dry, hopefully, over the course of the next couple weeks as winter seems to be upon us. Okay, thank you. Mr. Plary? Yes, um, I'd like to uh, compliment the road department for the work they did to clean our roads and get the roads open. I'll apologize for my uh, outbursts with Mr. Conley, but month in and month out, I'm tired of being called a corrupt politician for something that's not even our situation to handle. Um, we giving the and things that were done in 1984 that he's accusing there was this government what form of government wasn't even in there we had nothing to do with it but it still wouldn't change what's going on with the county and I apologize for that but it's getting old to be called corrupt every every month now so I apologize for that um, looking forward to unity week and all the good things that we do here in Ben Salem and uh, mayor the road department did a fantastic job Thank oh, you. Okay. Okay, so our next meeting our next meeting is January 24th uh, and uh, Unity Week is uh, Martin Luther King Week and next Friday it's is is it next Friday at St. Ephraim's? Not this Friday the following. Oh, uh, it's a couple Fridays from now. Uh, we'll have our, our be able to at least go, go to St. Ephraim's and uh, hopefully people can enjoy it uh, streaming the Unity Week. We miss being at different events. Uh, and we do try to reach out and we do try to do what we can to help people with their situations, but sometimes uh, things are beyond our control. But um, we do the best we can. So with that, do we have a motion to, uh, uh, to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. And your second? My second. You did a good job with the seconds tonight. I did. All right. Look at the hang okay. of it. Okay. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.